You ain't bout it, you ain't bout it, you ain't kick on the mic. You ain't bout it, you ain't bout it, you ain't kick on the mic. You can go and subscribe, cause I be on it right. You ain't bout it, you ain't bout it, you ain't kick on the mic. Bears fans, this has to be said. Hey, what's going on, Bears fans? Thank you so much for joining me for another episode of Keek on the Mic, the podcast all about the Chicago Bears. As always, if you're new to the channel, make sure you hit that subscribe button and the bell notification to catch all Bears content right here on the podcast. Bears fans, I don't have any breaking news or rumors coming out of the NFL scouting combine in regards to the number one overall pick, Caleb Williams, or even Justin Fields. I just wanted to come on here really quick on today's episode of Kick on the Mic, to just have an honest conversation with all you loyal Bears fans. Obviously, as we all know, that Bears fans and the Bears community have been going back and forth, debating with each other on what the Chicago Bears should do with the number one overall pick and what we should do with quarterback Justin Fields. With half of the Bears community or fan base saying we should take Caleb Williams, it's a no-brainer, while the other half of the Bears community and fan base are saying that we should keep Justin Fields and trade down from the number one overall pick and continue to build around quarterback Justin Fields. But the argument that I've been seeing a lot between the Bears fan base that they've been debating about over the last couple of days, I just wanted to come on here and just give my honest opinion on it, is this. So basically, we are comparing the two, right? Justin Fields and Caleb Williams, which to me, um, it's it's kind of impossible to do because obviously Justin Fields has played three seasons in the National Football League and Caleb Williams has not, right? He's about to come in into his rookie season, possibly with the Chicago Bears. But what I've been hearing is this, and this is something that I have said before on the podcast right here on Kick on the Mic. This is something that I actually quite agree with. People that are wanting to keep quarterback Justin Fields are saying, well, if you get rid of quarterback Justin Fields, right, and you draft Caleb Williams with the number one overall pick in the 2024 NFL draft, he's got to come in right away and make the playoffs in his first season. And to me, is it fair? No, absolutely not. He's going to be a rookie. Um, it's going to be his first season in the National Football League. And it doesn't matter if you're the number one overall pick or even the number 20 overall pick in the NFL draft, right? You're always going to have your rookie growing pains. But the argument for the people that want to keep Justin Fields is this. If you are going to draft Caleb Williams with the number one overall pick, you are telling us that Caleb Williams is better than quarterback Justin Fields right now and where the roster is at and how good Ryan Poles has built up the Chicago Bears roster. The Chicago Bears should be a playoff team as soon as next year, no matter who is playing quarterback for the Chicago Bears. Obviously, the other side of the Bears fan base that are supporting Caleb Williams and they're just done with quarterback Justin Fields in general are coming back and basically saying, well, that's not really fair. I am going to give Caleb Williams the same number of years that we gave Justin Fields to succeed, which is three years. But to me, it, it's really hard to do that. And I'm going to try to go on, on both sides of the fence here, right? It's really hard to make that type of argument, starting off with Caleb Williams. One, if we do draft Caleb Williams, he will be the number one overall pick. And once again, these are two different situations when you're talking about Caleb Williams and Justin Fields, two different scenarios. But when you're looking at Caleb Williams, he will be the number one overall pick. Not only that, and the expectations that come with the number one overall pick, there has been many people saying that Caleb Williams is a generational talent. The best thing we have seen since Andrew Luck. Obviously, giving him comparisons to Aaron Rodgers, comparing him to guys like Patrick Mahomes. So obviously, when you say things like that, you consistently hear it from NFL insiders, right? People around the National Football League. Everyone is saying the same exact thing about Caleb Williams. So when you have those expectations coming in, especially how the roster is built for the Chicago Bears, how we have a lot of young pieces on the defense side of the ball, the defense should be top 10 going into next year. Obviously, when you look on the offensive side of the ball, if you add one or two more weapons, you add a center to the offensive line, the Chicago Bears offense should also be a really good unit going into next year. So when you say all those things, Caleb Williams should have no problem coming in from year one and taking the Chicago Bears team to the playoffs. And once again, if you say all these things about Caleb Williams, right? and you draft Caleb Williams with the number one overall pick in the 2024 NFL draft, you are once again telling me that he is better 
than Justin Fields right now. Because my expectation from Justin Fields, if we did keep him, traded the number one overall pick and continued to build around Justin Fields, is that Justin Fields would lead this Chicago Bears football team to the playoffs next season. So no matter if you go Caleb Williams or keep Justin Fields, my expectations are the same. And I understand a lot of people are going to say, well, Keek, that's not fair. He is a rookie. We should give him at least two years. No, that's not that's not how I feel. It's truly just not how I feel. You're a number one overall pick. So you, so you already have those expectations as the number one overall pick, right? You're, you're being called a generational talent, the best thing we've seen since Andrew Luck. So if you're going to say all these things, my mind is telling me that, okay, that means you are better than Justin Fields right now, meaning how the Chicago Bears team is built, this team is ready to go to the playoffs next year. So when we're talking about Caleb Williams, that is where I stand. So I don't really feel like we have to give him three years. Of course, he will get three, three plus years possibly to prove that he's the franchise quarterback. I'm just saying in general, we should be able to go to the playoffs in year one with Caleb Williams. Just as much as I expect to go to the playoffs with Justin Fields next year if we do keep Justin Fields. So let's now go on the other side of the fence when we're talking about quarterback Justin Fields and why I think it's two different situations. And I know a lot of people coming on the other side talking about, you know, when they support Caleb Williams and saying, well, that's not fair. If we gave Justin Fields three years to succeed and take the Bears to the playoffs, we should give that to Caleb Williams, right? No, it's not the same thing. When you're looking at quarterback Justin Fields, in 2021, he was the number 11 overall pick. Justin Fields wasn't even supposed to play in his rookie season, right? He It was supposed to be Andy Dalton for the full season. And Matt Nagy, that's what he won. I believe Matt Nagy made that very clear as well, even when he was fired um, from the Chicago Bears, right? The Chicago Bears did not want Justin Fields to play at all. But obviously Andy Dalton got hurt in week two against the Cincinnati Bengals, the home opener for the Chicago Bears that season. And obviously Justin Fields had to play. Was it a good experience for Justin Fields? Of course it was a good experience. But the team wasn't built the right way to really support Justin Fields. So in 2021, his rookie season was basically a wash. Going into year two, that's when Ryan Poles came in. Obviously, the Chicago Bears fired Matt Nagy, fired Ryan Page, brought in Ryan Poles, brought, brought in Matt Eberflus, brought in Justin Fields' second offensive coordinator. So now Justin Fields was dealt to learn a brand new offense in year two in the National Football League. Obviously, Ryan Poles came in and tore this team to shreds, traded away Khalil Mack, traded away Roquan Smith. The only guys that Justin Fields had to throw to was Equinamia St. Brown, Darnell Mooney, and Byron Pringle, and of course, Cole Komet. That's all Justin Fields had. Obviously, you look at the offensive line, the offensive line was in shambles. Ryan Poles absolutely decimated this roster. Looking into year three, that's when Ryan Poles finally gave Justin Fields a true number one wide receiver. And DJ Moore, you still had Cole Komet. They started making a relationship. I see Darnell Mooney went downhill. You still had, still had Equinamia St. Brown. The offensive line was better. They were middle of the pack, but still not great. So when you look at that, when you look at Justin Field situations, and, and when people say, well, he's had three years to succeed, you really can't say that. Yes, Justin Fields had to show improvement. Obviously, we haven't seen the, the major improvement that we have seen maybe from Joe Burrow, Josh Allen, even guys like Patrick Mahomes, right? But everyone's situation is different. And when you look at Justin Fields' situation, he was dealt a shitty hand in my book. Justin Fields was dealt a rebuild. So now the people that want to continue to support Justin Fields and, and keep Justin Fields and trade down for the number one overall pick – the reason why they want to do that, because they feel like the foundation that Ryan Poles was trying to build with this football team is finally built and ready to compete as soon as next year. And they feel like Justin Fields should at least get one more opportunity to prove that he is the guy for the Chicago Bears. I know for a lot of people that don't want Justin Fields, it may not make sense. It may not make sense to some of you guys. But when you look at Justin Fields' first three years, Justin Fields was really dealt a shitty hand. He really was. Justin Fields was dealt with the rebuild. And now there's some Bears fans out there that just want to get rid of him. And obviously it's a business. Obviously sometimes the NFL business is not fair. But at the same time, Justin Fields was not dealt a great hand in his first three years. And finally, the foundation's built for the Chicago Bears. 
If you trade down and collect massive amount of draft capital, multiple first round picks, multiple second round picks, continue to build a team around Justin Fields, we may be able to finally see Justin Fields' full potential. And I know a lot of people say, well, he had three years to do it. But once again, when you list off the things, what Justin Fields was dealt, was dealt with, throwing to Byron Pringle, Echo Navy of St. Brown, and Darnell Mooney as his top weapons in, in year two, going through multiple offensive coordinators that didn't know how to use Justin Fields the right way and play to his strengths. That's why there's a lot of Bears fans out there that want to keep quarterback Justin Fields and continue to build around him because they truly believe with a better offensive coordinator in Shane Waldron that's going to play to his strengths, a almost complete offensive line, and a guy like Marvin Harrison Jr. will finally show Justin Fields true potential in being the Chicago Bears franchise quarterback. So when you look at Caleb Williams and you look at Justin Fields, it's two different situations because now you get a guy like Caleb Williams, he's going to benefit from what Ryan Poles has been building the last couple of years, right? Obviously, Justin Fields was dealt a shitty hand because we were going through a rebuild, but now Bears are saying, okay, Justin Fields ha has had, had enough time, right? Justin Fields is done. Three years is enough. But now... Caleb Williams is going to get the benefit from what Justin Fields didn't have. Caleb Williams didn't have to go through that rebuild, and I know it sucks. It's, it's just the business, the nature of the business. But it does suck for Justin Fields because now Caleb Williams gets to come in to almost a complete football team, right? You, all you need to do is find another center. You give him another weapon. The defense is going to be a top 10 unit going into the next season. Caleb Williams is going to benefit from all of this. He's going to get everything that Justin Fields never had in his three years. So when we make, when we talk about this, it's two different situations, but at the same time, the expectation should be the same for both quarterbacks because this team as a whole, offense, defense, special teams, coaching, the Bears should very well be a playoff team as soon as next year, no matter if you go get Caleb Williams at number one or you keep quarterback Justin Fields. So that's just my thought process. That's just what my mind's thinking at. I'm not sure you guys agree with me. Go ahead and comment down below in the comment section. I just wanted to come on here really quick and just have that honest conversation with you guys. I know I talked about it before on past podcasts right here on Kick on the Mic, but I just wanted to get that off my chest because that's just my mind mindset. That's how I've been feeling for a long time. But once again, go ahead and continue to engage with me. Um, it, it's still a long process. We don't know what the Chicago Bears are going to do. Um, but like I always tell you guys, no matter if they take Caleb Williams with the number one overall pick or I guess keep Justin Fields or, or trade down for the number one overall pick and continue to build around Justin Fields, this football team is in very good hands because of the way Ryan Poles has built the foundation, right? He, he did a really good job of building that defense. He did a really good job of continuing to build offensive line. He finally got a true number one and, and DJ Moore. He has the opportunity to get another huge weapon, maybe in Roman Denze, maybe Malik Napers, maybe Brock Bowers, right? We could possibly add another edge rusher in, in Dallas, Dallas Turner or uh, Jared Verse. The building is still being completed by Ryan Poles, but kudos to him for how he has built this roster. And the Chicago Bears should very well be a playoff contender as soon as next year. And I'm really looking forward to for the Bears to finally make a decision um, on a number one overall pick um, on Justin Fields, on the whole Caleb Williams drama going on in Chicago. Because at the end of the day, Bears fans, another message to you guys, we just all have to get along. Because at, at the end of the day, we just want to see a winner. And I think that is the conflict right now. I think once we make a decision, rather it's Caleb Williams or Justin Fields, if any of them can come in and just finally win for the Chicago Bears, I think Bears fans can finally get along and, and stop arguing with each other because to me, it's just a waste of time and it's just plain, it's just dumb at this point, right? So all in all, Bears fans, make sure you continue to hit that subscribe button and the notification to catch all Bears content right here on the podcast. Make sure you follow me on all my social media platforms and make sure you share this episode of Keek on the Mic with every single Bears fan that you know. But other than that, be back for our all new Bears podcast right here on Keek on the Mic. Thanks guys. And as always, Bear Down. You've been listening to Keek on the Mic, a podcast all about the Chicago Bears. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel and hit the bell notification to catch all Bears content right here on the podcast. Thanks, guys, and Bear Down. Hey.